I think this is true of a lot of members on the team. You're in an engineering program, you say, what's the biggest, coolest problem I could work on? And here's this competition announcing, you know, the transportation method of the future. I think whether it pans out or not, there, as an engineer, you don't think, oh, I, you think I wonder if that'll work, and then you go work on it. Back now with a brand new look at what could be the future of travel, getting from place to place much quicker than we do now. It's called Hyperloop. Climb aboard Hyperloop One, cutting a path through a hypothetical desert at 700 miles per hour. In a tweet, entrepreneur Elon Musk announced that he has just received verbal government approval to build a new underground Hyperloop network. Texas Guadalupe is a team of mostly graduate, but also undergraduate engineers, business students, computer scientists, sort of from all engineering disciplines at UT. Every engineer knew about the Hyperloop problem. They knew about SpaceX. They knew about Elon Musk and Tesla and all the cool things he's doing. So when the competition was announced, there was no shortage of, of people who were just saying, man, I, I really want to take a crack at that problem. Originally, um, we, we were really excited because we were one of 120 teams that had been accepted into this competition out of so many submissions. And we had the time to present to SpaceX and we did not get selected to move on in the competition. Uh, it really hurt us not being selected uh, back in January 2016 because you know companies want to sponsor the winning team. We weren't even on the list of teams that were gonna compete. We were just kind of saying on faith, hey, we're gonna build this pod. And so we scrapped together money just any way we could find it. And turns out um, so many of those teams who built out designs couldn't actually build their pods. And SpaceX gave us a second chance and looked at what we built and they loved it. So now we're officially one of the top 20 teams in the world competing in this. The pod will be about 14 feet long um, by 41 inches wide, about three and a half feet wide by three feet high. It's quite complicated to make things very simple and effective in, in, a, in a competition like this. And the biggest challenge is, is braking. So you can get going and you can get levitating. How do you stop now? So it's a braking system, a stability system, and a pneumatic system is really how the problem boils down. So we just have some compressed air tanks on board. It goes through our pneumatic system out the bottom of our pod to levitate. And then we have a uh, braking system that will bring us to a stop so that we don't crash through the end of the tube. I think that the three main categories on the team or the three main sub teams or subdivisions would be the mechanic mechanical team that's sort of building all the mechanical systems the electronic and controls team who are figuring out how to control those mechanical systems, and then the business team. I would say this has been one of the biggest learning experiences of my life. I mean, it's not every day that you take on a huge um, problem that is centered around transportation. It's pretty daunting to, to be a small team of people from the University of Texas and say, okay, I'm going to solve the Hyperloop problem. And now we're here and it's and we're doing it and we're gonna keep doing it. I think there's a lot of research that needs to be done. And I think Texas Guadalupe has a say in, in the outcome of the Hyperloop. So anything we accomplish here will add to the commercial viability of the Hyperloop. And that's really the driving factor behind everything we do. We don't just wanna you know, do something cool and win a competition. We want to actively influence whether or not this, this idea is gonna take off.